Okay, so let's go ahead and start with a quick review problem. So go ahead and try uh, this first review problem up at the top. Okay, so you'll notice after I do my first distribution, when I'm combining like terms, I have 9x squared, 15x minus 15x cross each other out, and I get minus 25. So this makes a special quadratic. You can see this one looks a little bit different than most that we do because it only has two terms where when we're combining like terms these middle terms always cross out. So we're going to look at a shortcut to factoring quadratics of this type that have um, no middle term. Okay, um, So let's, let's do these, quick try these, and I don't want you, to, you guys to do anything different on these. I want you to do them like you normally know how. Now you might say, Mr. Craw, these look a little bit weird. Well, yeah, they do, but what happens if I do this? So I say x squared. If I had to add something in the middle, to make it look like we normally look at it, but I didn't want to change it, I would just have to add a plus 0x minus 121. And if you use the shortcut that we learned last class, I find the factors of negative 121 to add to 0, which would be 11 and negative 11. So x squared plus 11x minus 11x minus 12. Or sorry, 121. I was like, why is that not working? Okay. So out of the first two, I bring out an x, and I'm left with x plus 11. And out of the last two, I can bring out a negative 11, and I'm left with x minus, uh, sorry, x plus 11. So then x plus 11 comes out, and I'm left with x minus 11 left over. Okay, so I want you guys to go ahead and do the try these two and three in that same manner. Go ahead, and then you can play the video when you're ready for the answer. Okay, so we see here on number two, we factor it down and get x plus 3x minus 3. And then on number three, I'm going to have to do the AC method here. I just kind of skip, skip some steps for sake of time. But um, we do the AC method here with multiplying 4x squared by negative 49, finding the factors of that that add to zero, uh, grouping, and then we end up with 2x plus 7 and 2x minus 7. So a pattern, if you want to go ahead and pause it here and think about what patterns you see above, you can go ahead and do that. Um, the patterns that I see, if you've already paused, are that we always see opposites, right? These are always opposites. It's always going to be plus or minus. So that's my first observation. So first observation always plus and minus. And then the other observation that I see, and I'm not sure if you realize this one or not, but if you look at the binomials compared to the original problems, think about how do I get from x squared to x? How do I get from 121 to 11? And hopefully you realize the square root of x squared is x. The square root of 121 is 11. On number two, the square root of x squared is x. The square root of 9 is 3. The square root of 4x squared is 2x. The square root of 49 is 7. Okay? So the second thing is um, always take square root of terms. Okay, so I want you to go ahead and pause it. I want you to try to write a rule to factor a binomial to form a squared minus b squared. So just in general. So go ahead and pause it. Okay, so basically what I'm doing is I'm taking a squared and I'm taking the square root. So if I take the square root of a squared, I'm left with a. If I take the square root of b squared, I'm left with b. And then it looks like, remember, second observation, we always add and subtract them. So in my binomials, I have a, oh, I messed up there, sorry, started with x. I have a plus b, and I have a minus b. Okay? All right, so before we do some try these, I want to talk about what a what is and isn't a difference of squares. So let's say is and not. Okay, and we're talking about a difference of squares. So a different. Okay, so some things that it is. Okay, it has to be two terms. Let me get my pen out here. Two terms. It's not three or four terms. Okay, it has to be a difference. Hence the name difference of squares. And difference, remember, is subtraction, and it's not a sum. It's not addition. Okay, so that's one common thing that you got to look out for. And lastly, what it is, um, terms 
are perfect squares. Okay, so let's look at some things that are and aren't. Okay, so something that is. So I have to have two terms, and they both have to be perfect squares. So like four uh, x squared and sixteen y to the fourth. Okay, if I took the square root of both of those, they would come out very nicely, right? They would all everything would come out of the square root, and it has to be a minus. Okay, so I could have something that both are perfect squares, like nine x squared. Um, and 100, right? Both of those are perfect squares. But if I have a plus sign in the middle, that's not a difference of squares, okay? Um, obviously, if I had three terms or something, that would not be a difference of squares. And then last but not least, let's look at something like this. What if I have um, 10x squared minus 25? Well, yeah, 25 is a perfect square, but what's the square root of 10? It doesn't come out nicely. So since this, oh, I put that in the wrong spot, didn't I? Oops. There we go. Let's move it over here. Sorry, I put it in the wrong spot. I was talking about it not being a perfect square and put it in the wrong spot. So yes, it's a difference. Yes, 25 is a perfect square, but 10 is not a perfect square. So this would not be a difference of squares. Okay, so I have to have two terms. Both are perfect squares, and it's a minus in the middle. Okay? All right, so now that, now that we have that knowledge, let's go ahead and I want you to go ahead and pause the video. I'm going to get rid of all this stuff. And I want you to pause the video, do the three try these, and then you can go ahead and play the video when you're ready for me. Okay, so number one, I take the square root of the pieces first. So square root of 9r squared is 3r Square root of 100 s squared is 10 s, and then I add and subtract. So 3 r plus 10 s and 3 r minus 10 s. Okay, so that's my final answer. Number two, square root of 36 x squared is 6 x, square root of 16 is 4. So I add them, 6x plus 4, and subtract them, 6x minus 4. Okay, and then lastly, number 3, hopefully you realized, plus sign in the middle, it's not a difference of squares, so I can't factor that. Okay, so just be careful, be on the lookout for problems like that. Okay, so number 1 here. Um, let's look at solving, okay? So just a quick solving problem. Um... So it looks like both of these are perfect squares. And remember, you're still always checking for a GCF. There's nothing that divides out of 36 and 49. So that doesn't help me. But these are both perfect squares. It's two terms, and there's a minus sign in the middle. So I take the square root of 36x squared. That's 6x. Square root of 49 is 7. Add them and subtract them. So 6x plus 7 and 6x minus 7. And notice that we have an equal zero here, so we got to keep that there, equal zero. And remember, we solve these just like we've always solved before. In order for this whole thing to be zero, this piece could be zero or this piece could be zero. So 6x plus 7 equals zero, and 6x minus 7 equals zero. So that means x equals a negative 7 over 6, and x equals a positive 7 over 6. Okay, so go ahead and pause the video. Do the number two. Make sure you look for a GCF. That's a hint, hint there. Um, so try a GCF, then do your difference of squares, and go ahead and solve it, and then you can play the video when you're ready for the answer. Okay, so I take out my GCF of 4m, and I'm left with m squared minus, let's see, 36. Okay, still equals zero, so I have a GCF out front now, but you see inside the parentheses, I have two terms, both are perfect squares, and it's a minus sign in the middle, so I can do difference of squares. So square root of m squared is m, square root of 36 is 6. So remember, my dip, or excuse me, my greatest common factor stays out here, and then I add the pieces, m plus 6, subtract the pieces, m minus 6 equals zero. So this is actually going to have three answers, right? Because I have for m equals 0, so m equals 0. 
I have m plus 6 equals 0, so m equals negative 6. And I have m minus 6 equals 0, so I have m equals positive 6. So there are my three answers, 0, negative 6, and 6. So those are your notes. You are ready to move on to the practice.